Hello, this is Pastor Georgi from BoyNetUtunity.com and welcome back to another study session on the book of Ezekiel. See, many people ask, why study the book of Ezekiel? We are living in the new covenant period. See, we need to know that the book of Ezekiel has a list of prophecies concerning not only the people of Israel, but also it applies to the people who are living in the end times to discern the times. See, those were a list of prophecies given to the prophet Ezekiel almost 600 years before Christ. But still, it describes the destruction of Jerusalem. It describes how Israel is reborn as a nation in the last days. The prophecies concerning the Islamic nations and how Israel is attacked by the Gog Magog forces in the end times, how God rescues them. Prophecies concerning the millennium period and also the millennium temple the rule of the Messiah during the millennium, all those things are beautifully described in this book. And that's why in these last days, we are trying to study the book of Ezekiel so that we can apply it, we can discern these times and live our lives accordingly in the light of the coming of Jesus. So this is chapter 19. And chapter 19 primarily has two lamentations, one for the princes of Israel and the second one over the land of Judah. Moreover, take up a lamentation for the princes of Israel and say, What is your mother? A lioness? She lay down among the lands. Among the young lands, she nourished her cups. Lioness. The lioness is the kingdom of Israel. The lands among whom she had laid down are the pagan nations. So the idea is that the people of God had adopted the behavior of those pagan nations had adopted the idolatrous and other false rituals and practices from those pagan nations. She brought up one of her cups and he became a young lion. He learned to catch prey and he devoured men. The nations also heard of him. He was trapped in their pit and they brought him with chains to the land of Egypt. One of her cups, who is that? That's Jehoahaz. And his rule was characterized by ungodliness and oppression, like that of Zedekiah who came after him. Jehoahaz was taken prisoner by the king of Egypt, Pharaoh Necho, and taken to Egypt and brought him with chains. See, we need to know that in those days, no strings were put through the nostrils of captives in war. And that's how he was taken to Egypt. When she saw that she waited that her hope was lost, she took another of her cups and made him a young lion. He roved among the lands and became a young lion. He learned to catch prey. He devoured men. Another of her cups. Who is that? That's Jehoachin, who also contributed to making the children of Israel idolaters as any pagan nation. Now, some may say that this could be Zedekiah. And if that is so, this could be predictive prophecy because Zedekiah is still ruling in Jerusalem. But we have to keep in mind that Ezekiel did not see Zedekiah as the rightful ruler of Judah. He saw Jehoachin as the last rightful legal king of Judah. So therefore, this should be Jehoachin. So Jehoachin, Jeconiah, Koniah are all the same person. Don't confuse him with his father, Jehoiakim. He knew their desolate places and laid waste their cities. The land with its fullness was desolated by the noise of his roaring. Then the nations set against him from the provinces on every side and spread their net over him. He was trapped in their pit. The bands of Babylonians, Syrians, Moabites and Ammonites came against Judah to destroy it with Babylonians as their leader because Babylon was the world power at that time. They put him in a cage with chains and brought him to the king of Babylon. They brought him in nets that his voice should no longer be heard on the mountains of Israel. Jehoachin was taken captive to Babylon by Nebuchadnezzar just as Jehoahaz was taken to Egypt. So from he, this point onwards, the focus shifts from the lioness to the wine that is Israel. Your mother was like a wine in your bloodline, planted by the waters, fruitful and full of branches because of many waters. She had strong branches for scepters of rulers. 
she towered in stature above the thick branches and was seen in her height amid the dense foliage see the vine that refers to the nation israel seen in many places throughout scripture but she was plucked up in fury she was cast down to the ground and the east wind dried her fruit her strong branches were broken and withered the fire consumed them and now she is planted in the wilderness in a dry and thirsty land east wind we saw in chapter 17 that it referred to nebuchadnezzar and plucked up see the nation of israel did not deteriorate or wither away gradually it was plucked up or uprooted see it served as a sign of god's judgment upon the nation for her unfaithfulness and dry and thirsty land babylon was well irrigated with good fertility so the condition that is referred to as dry and thirsty land refers to the condition of the exiled people of israel in babylon fire has come out from a rod of her branches and devoured her fruit so that she has no strong branch as scepter for ruling this is a lamentation and has become a lamentation see in addition to the idolatry and the immorality within the kingdom the treachery that zadakaya committed we saw that in our previous sessions nebuchadnezzar made zadakaya swear an oath before god that zadakaya will be loyal to nebuchadnezzar but what did zadakaya do he broke that oath he broke that oath that he gave to nebuchadnezzar and therefore he broke that oath which he made before god therefore god's wrath has come to its fullness and therefore jerusalem is about to be destroyed by fire so as we close this session what is the summary that we can gain from this chapter since the royal line was cursed that is the last legal king was jehoachin there was no king to rule from the throne of david legally the only rightful king is the messiah who is alive today and he is coming back see he did not sit on david's throne yet as the angel promised mary but he will during the millennium and at the council of jerusalem this was declared by james we see that in acts chapter 15 he was quoting from amos chapter 9 amen Jesus is going to reign as the rightful king from the throne of David fulfilling all those prophecies even the prophecies given before Ezekiel all those prophecies that Jesus will reign from the throne of David that is going to be fulfilled during the millennium and that's not very far from now the way how God dealt with his chosen people and their leaders should teach us that God is serious with regard to his standards there should be absolutely no compromise with regard to holiness we ought to be holy god dealt with those people severely if so that should motivate us that we also should live a holy life before the lord because he has called us to holiness be holy as i am holy that's what the bible says amen so let's all watch our lives and let's all pray all the more and as we study these sessions Let's be moved by the Holy Spirit of the Living God to live our lives pleasing our Lord Jesus Christ as his coming is so imminent. Amen. May God bless you. And by the way, if you are blessed by this message, be sure to hit that like button and also if you are not yet subscribed, kindly subscribe by pressing that subscribe button and also pressing that bell notification so that you would continue to receive blessed messages and updates like this in on this same channel. 